Hi guys, Jace here. Keep watching if you're thinking about upgrading to access electronic shifting and why I won't do it again. Let's get to it. In January uh, 2020, seven months ago, I bought my new bike, the Norco Revolver FS120 Axis, just right behind me. Click up here if you'd like to see the review. The spec was top of the range, dropper and Axis electronic shifting, the works. Let's cut to the chase. The main reason I won't buy Axis electronic shifting in the future is this well here's how i broke my 1000 us dollar rear derailleur going down a slippery grade 4 track was one of these crashes now i did go to the bike shop they told me it was terminal and i did request to be changed to mechanical x01 but alas that was on back order so i had to stick with the access look i should have been forewarned i got a road bike and that has SRAM ETAP red and the rear derailleur just give up the ghost one day. Now luckily that was covered under warranty so that was replaced quick smart. So that brings me on to SRAM's warranty. Now what do they say? SRAM warranty says this warrant does not apply damage to the product caused by a crash impact, abuse of the product, non-compliance with manufacturer's specifications of intended usage, or any other circumstances in which the product has been subject to forces or loads beyond its design. This thing is expensive. Now compared to Mechanical Eagle XO1 Access, which is about 1250 US dollars, the Access is around 1900 US dollars. Now, with access, you get two clutches. There's the usual one-way clutch at the cage pivot for chain retention, but there's also the very important sounding overload clutch. Its job is to isolate that gearbox from tiny impacts, like rock strike or even just your bike falling over. This is designed to disengage the motor and gearbox should you whack your mech into a rock or stump and allows the mech to move and then return to the last known shift location. It also has 10 millimeters more clearance than the standard Eagle mech. So SRAM have thought about this, but not enough at least to add it to their warranty. Or you'd think at least you'd get a crash replacement warranty, which would be a nice touch. Batteries and remembering to charge them. Now SRAM says, they last about 20 plus hours for the um, for the rear derailleur and it, it's there or thereabouts although I've had an instance where I've checked it the night before pressed the green button it was all very good and then during a ride it's just given up the ghost luckily I had the axis dropper so that enabled me to swap them around and I could carry on riding albeit with uh, my seat post up on the downhills which uh, wasn't that pleasant altogether. SRAM recommends replacing the batteries when you're traveling on long journeys because it's got a motion sensor in there and the Bluetooth I think continues to work so that may be the reason so remembering to swap those out or put the plastic inserts in when you're traveling is, is another is another thing you have to remember. There are other things against the access shifting as well. It's sometimes too easy when you're going uphill at, at a rate of knots or, or you're hanging out your backside trying to get up a technical climb. You can easily just knock it the wrong way because you know, you're not used to the gearing and it gets harder instead of easier. Or you can flick it down two or three gears when you don't want to. Let's not forget SRAM Mechanical Eagle is still one of the benchmarks and, and one of the top of the range products you can get out there for shifting. Arguably Shimano XT and XTR have taken over that mantle. But there's nothing wrong with mechanical shifting. I've got mechanical X01 Eagle on my enduro bike and it works a treat. Doesn't miss a beat. Yes, you have to press the trigger a little bit more, but there's nothing wrong with it. It hasn't given me any problems. 
it's still working. I've still got the rear derailleur on there, despite it being about three years old. Never had a rear derailleur or breakage at all. Batteries and wireless connection will always add more potential issues than cables. And the access system costs about 25% more than their conventional equivalents. Some people might just prefer the physical feedback of analog compared to clinical button click or it sounds like a mouse to me. It's not all bad though. If you're in the small cog and need to dump up a few gears and when you're going up a technical climb you can just press and I'll flick through three or four gears nice and quick with that paddle. The Axis dropper post. Now that's awesome. It just works and it's super fast. I've had no issues with it and the battery lasts about 40 to 50 hours. It's the best drop post I've had by far. Now again, is it worth the money? 800 US dollars compared to 400 US dollars, twice the price. Uh, well, I didn't really have any problems in my last one. I've got a Fox transfer on my enduro bike and it works fine. The only advantage I can see is that if you've got more than one bike, and they've got the same seat post diameters, then you can switch between bikes pretty quickly. So it may be worth having the access dropper post in that instance. Like it or not, electronics are the future. The prices will go down, the technology will go up. But until it's in a sealed gearbox type cartridge, count me out. Thanks for watching, and if you like the content, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. See you next time.